This is not a relationship <laughs> advice. Uh, yeah. I, I saw you come in that Bentley. So I, saw, I, saw, I saw bags. Of stuff, bags of Rich money. Paul loaned that to me. <laughs> shout out, shout out, shout Rich out Paul. to Rich Paul. Shout out Rich Paul. Welcome everyone to the greatest financial literacy podcast on the planet, NBA Unplugged, where today Professor Young and I have the honor to interview a very special guest. Now, many of you have heard real estate and investing are among some of the only ways to grow your wealth. Well, we are privileged today to have Ms. Carter, who is here to inform us on an underutilized way to grow wealth, which is through franchising. Ms. Carter, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm good. I'm wonderful. Professor Young, how are you? I'm doing great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we have a very exciting episode. So Ms. Carter, um, I know you mentioned you have over a decade of experience when it comes to working within the franchise industry. So for the viewers, can you mind giving us a little background information about where you started and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, so I started selling franchises, gosh, 15 plus years ago. Okay. Um, and I came from the hotel and hospitality industry, so it was a pretty easy transition. Um, one that I didn't even know existed. And, and that you know that's part of my story. Like I didn't know anything about franchising until yeah. I started working in this space. Yeah. And I know that's true for a lot of people that look like us, right? right? And so, um, so what I did is I spent uh, five years working for Focus Brands, selling uh, restaurants for, uh, selling franchises for um, Cinnabon and Carvel ice mm. cream, and then moved over to Dunkin' Brands. Um, and so uh, in 2017, I started my first franchise consulting business. Okay. Um, and then January of this year, I started the, uh, the Franchise Player, which is a movement that I created to provide education, opportunity, and resources to the black community. Awesome. That's awesome. So I know you said um, you really, you really experienced the life of an entrepreneur. So the hard times that come with that, do you want to give, I know we have a lot of people, a lot of, especially people in college who want to become entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I know you are a living testimony to that. What does that life consist of and how it's not as easy as maybe <laughs> social media, social media will portray it to be. Just yeah. The glitz and glam. Right. That's right. That you see on TikTok. Yeah. You know, yeah. All the money, you know, yeah. you know everybody the cars. doing this and all yeah. that kind of stuff. The Bentley, so. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't have a Bentley. You drove in a Bentley. That's all you did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Bentley. You know, I'm sure. It's a V, but it's not a Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, social media makes everything look great, right? right. You know, yep. everyone's skinny and everyone's beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's filters, you know, and there's. There's just so much out there that's a lot of smoke and mirrors. But uh, for me, entrepreneurship has really been, uh, it's been rewarding, but it's also been challenging as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say, you know, every day is going to be different right. and you don't have the luxury of uh, getting a, a paycheck every yeah. week, right? Yeah. Yeah. You sometimes don't have health benefits and you sometimes, you know, you're, 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 you'll have good months and you'll have bad months, right? Mm -hmm. You might make a lot you know in January you mm -hmm. might not make anything else until May right, right, right? right so you have to be very good at budgeting your money yeah. um, and then you also have to understand that everybody's progress is different right everybody's not on the same page everyone's not moving at the same pace yeah. so um, competition and um, and just com comparison I should say yeah. is um, is a great way to set yourself up for, for failure because okay. yeah. um, you have to know what your mission is and then um, and do the things that help you achieve your goals versus looking at what someone else is doing. Right, because everybody else always, runs their own race. Yeah, that's yeah right. everybody exactly. has their own race. You know, you said something that's interesting, as being an entrepreneur and not getting paid, and, and, and I know that, I know that space very well. Um, but how do you deal with the times that, I always say being an entrepreneur is a, it's a, um, it's a lonely experience. Very the highs are the highs and the mm -hmm. lows are the really lows and when you when the lows are there you're like by yourself how do you how do you deal with that and what would you how do you which what would you recommend for future entrepreneurs that want to do something like you're doing or it doesn't really matter how do they how, how would how would you recommend for them to deal with that it gets very lonely yeah. uh, because most times you're surrounded by people who are working a nine to five. Mm. So they don't understand your world. That's right. Right? Yep. So when they're at work, you know, they're at their nine to five, um, you might be taking a nap, right? Mm. And so you might, your hours might be very different from them. So your, your friendships start to change, right? Because now you're not as available as you once were when you were working a nine to five and you were on the same schedule as them. Um, you might, get invited to go to things and you can't go because maybe your money's not right, you yeah. know, that particular month. Yeah. And so now you're missing out on social activities. Yeah. So I think you really have to understand 
it's it's lonely and this is just it's if this is the walk you want to take you have to know this versus getting into it and realizing yeah. later on in life like yeah. i did i wasn't always an entrepreneur i worked um a nine to five i was a single mom and so i had a mouth to feed i had a son to raise and so I had to work a lot of jobs that I didn't want to work until I could do what I wanted to yeah, do. Yeah. And so that's where I am now. And um, and I'm learning even today that, you know, being an entrepreneur and, and what I do in this space, not a lot of people understand what yeah. franchising is. Yeah, and so yeah. my family, my friends, they're like, ooh, you go, girl. Yeah. She's out there doing something. She's yeah. at Morehouse today, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know what I do, yeah, right? And, but it's, yeah. and so it's lonely when you don't yeah. have anybody that you can talk to and share that. your wins with. Right. So if you know that what you need to do is really surround yourself with like-minded folks right. who are in that same space, yep. who understand. They might not be in the same industry as you, but they, they understand that struggle. But right. you know that one of the things that when you were in my office this morning, um, we talked about, you. I was telling you how I got in, in terms of being a professor. Mm -hmm. And I think I... I drew a point where, you know, trying to find your purpose. Yes. Mm. How much is your purpose driving you? <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, that, cause that's what it comes. Pressing into it today. Because oh, the pur huh? the, your purpose is what gets you up in the morning. Yeah. Your purpose has you voluntary, as I told you, yeah. right? Because it's, 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 what you, it's what God has put you on this earth to do. So, so we're about to have church. Yeah. Just so you know. Um, you didn't know I told you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> oh my gosh, so this is, this is exactly where I am. I'm in this space and again, didn't know what franchising was. And I've been put, I've had the privilege of being in rooms where most people won't go. Mm -hmm. I've had the, uh, the privilege of receiving information and education that most people don't even know exists out there. So for me to be in these places and spaces and learning what I've learned, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that this is my calling, mm -hmm. that God put me in those rooms because this information needs to reach our people. That's right. And it doesn't, right? That's and right. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's by design. Yeah. I don't know all of that. Yeah. All I know is I've been given this information and I have to do something with it. And so that's why I do what I do because I know that franchising is one of America's best kept secrets. That's right. That's and right. we are late to the dance. Yeah. So it's okay, we're here now, right? There's someone like myself who can provide information based on my experiences and my exposure, but there's so many of other people who also yep. look like us that yep. work in this space, whom I respect greatly, they're um, and they're doing the same things in their own way, yeah. right? And in, in, in different facets of franchising, it may be um, in the financial realm, it may be from an architectural standpoint, um, real estate, design, mm -hmm. yeah. operations, right? Mm -hmm. So when we had our conference last month, we had panels, um, panel discussions, and uh, everyone on the panel looked like us. You yeah. know, they worked in these spaces in That's different awesome. discipline, disciplines throughout um, franchising. So we had one panel that was um, committed to like uh, a day in the life of a franchisee. Mm -hmm. So we had um, Mike Quinn. He owns mm. 102. Pizza Hut and oh, Lowe's wow. Southwest Grills. Oh, wow. Um, so that's part that's of the awesome. Young Brands uh, uh, umbrella. And then we had Damon Dunn, who um, I sold him five Dunkin' Donuts stores in a small territory uh, before I left Dunkin', and he's okay. now up to 40 stores. So wow. Damon is like the, he's like the prototype. He's a retired NFL player, Stanford grad, and uh, he came into the system, and he, you know, he's super, cool. probably one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. And, um, and he knows the numbers, like he crunched the numbers, it all made sense. Wow. But I said, you know, Damon, you, you don't understand the operation side of the yeah, business. Yep. And so, because, you know, he's a, he's a football yeah, player, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, he, there was yeah, some yeah, pushback. Yeah. And right. then eventually he said, okay, I'm gonna do it. So he went and he spent, I think it was like two weeks um, from open to close in the store down in uh, Mobile, Alabama. Okay. And came back and was like, wow. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you yeah. pushed me to, to, to learn more about what I need to sure. know because he presented me a business plan which was solid, but it was mission, missing the people piece, mm. right? Because the people piece is so important. Right. And um, and so he, he basically, every time we, he was at the conference, he actually was my keynote speaker. And, um, and he told the story of how, you know, I kind of pushed back and eventually he got it. And he said, you know, if it wasn't for Taj, he says this all the time, if it wasn't for you, you know, I kind of would have, in not so many words, fallen flat on my face mm. because that business plan, even though it was great, I knew that it wouldn't get approved yeah. because I know what the brands yeah, are looking right. for. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So I know we kind of got into franchising a little bit. So to bring it full circle, for people who don't know what franchising is, can you give us a little brief description of what franchising is and what it really what it really does? Yeah, it's really simple. So uh, it's a it's a legal
a relationship between the owner of a business model okay. and an individual or a group of individuals that want to operate that business okay. model. So have access to the trademarks and the and the, the brand standards and the, basically the business model. Okay. And so they pay a franchise fee to enter into that system and then they pay ongoing fees which are called royalties and advertising fees. Okay. And so um, there's a process to getting into a brand Every brand is looking for something different. Right. Um, there are different requirements that people have to meet. So um, there's financial requirements. So they want to know um, what it what is your um, what are, what are, what are your, your your numbers, right? So what is your liquid cash? Mm -hmm. What is your net worth? What is your credit score, yeah. right? They need to know all of these things because you know they have to have metrics in place because they need to know that you have access. You can get access to capital right. yeah. to build out the stores yeah. that you're committing to build out. Yeah. So. Um, so it's a. I believe it's one of America's best kept secrets. I think I mentioned that earlier, yeah. and I believe that it's truly one of the best ways to get into business for yourself efficiently, mm. right? So you have all these systems yeah. behind you yeah. that have been proven, right? right. So any brand um, that is worth its weight in anything, right, has been battle tested. There are success stories out mm. there. You can talk to existing franchisees, um, former franchisees and really get a good understanding of what their experience has been, right? So that's a, a good way to kind of like measure whether or not you want to invest in a brand. But keep in mind, uh, franchisees come into the fold in different stages, right? So someone that opened their store 20 years ago was dealing with a different set of management, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. so things right. change, right? Change. Trade areas move, all sorts yeah. of things happen. Yeah. And so it's, it's important that you talk to franchisees that are at different stages. So you might talk to somebody from 20 years ago, or maybe five years ago, someone who just went through the process, mm -hmm. someone that owns a traditional location yeah. versus a non-traditional location. So there's a lot that you, you know, again, I've learned all this because yeah. I've been in this space for so long, so it's kind of common knowledge right. to me, but it's not common knowledge to someone right. that's new to franchising. Right. And so that's what we do at The Franchise Player, is we um, help you really navigate uh, that process yeah. and getting you to learn a, learn what franchising is and yeah. what it isn't. And it's not for everybody, right? right? There are some people who are just true entrepreneurs and they want to do what they want to do, when they want to do it, oh, and yeah. how they want to do it, yep. right? And, and franchising is not for them mm -hmm. because franchising is built on systems and processes. And if you are not coachable, then not franchising is not yeah. for you. Yeah. And, and that's an easy no, right? There's a conversation that takes place and there's certain questions that get asked and if, you know, if, if the answer is I want to do it my way and mm -hmm. I want to, I don't want Dunkin' Donuts, I want Targi's Donuts yeah. and I want to put bacon sprinkles on whatever, like, <laughs> you can't, have, can't yeah, do that, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, you're, you're buying into a system <clears throat> and you're paying to be a part of the system because it works, yeah. right? Yeah. It's so, proven too for so long. It's, it's proven. proven. But the, some of the officers you said, and it's, it's, you, you're going into business in a, from a franchise standpoint, because my, my days at Cinema as a controller, I always thought that you were going into business mm -hmm. with a proven business model, mm -hmm. but you weren't alone. Mm, exactly. That's an entrepreneur. You, so it kind of addresses when things get lonely. As a franchisee, you might get lonely, but you got that support system. You pick up the phone, it's like, I need help. Mm -hmm. I, you know, this is, I'm having issues with this or X or whatever the case is, and you can get it addressed. You have a yeah. family to come. You have rescue. a family that supports yeah. you. You have an operations yeah. team that yeah. you can lean on, but you also have peers, right? You That's also right. have, That's um, yep. yeah, you have peers in the system that you can go to and ask questions. And it might be something simple when you're just getting started that you don't need to call corporate for, right? right. Mm -hmm. So you have, um, you know, your, your, your peers that you can approach and have conversations with. But then also you have to remember that yes, the brand is responsible for um, a certain amount of support, yeah. right? But they can't do everything. It's right. really your you. business. You have to, at the end of the day, you have to make sure that, that business is successful. So they're responsible um, to provide what's included in their franchise disclosure yeah. document. Sure. And we'll get into that, I'm yeah. sure at yeah. some yeah. point. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, you know, if they've reached their legal, um, if they've reached the, the legal commitment, right, they've, they've made true on their end of the bargain. Right. Um, as, an, as a franchisee, an independent fran business owner, you have to make sure yeah. that you are locally marketing right. your business, right? You still have to play a part in the business, yeah. You well, you have to, you yeah. are the business, yeah. right? Yeah. So you bought into the business. So must be, some people think, okay, I paid my franchise fee and I paid these royalties, and it's the brand's responsibility to make me successful. Mm -hmm. 
you know, that's not how yeah, it works, it. right? So you buy the rights to develop a store or whatever it is. We'll just right. use restaurants as an example. And you are responsible for um, hiring your general contractor, negotiating your lease. Mm. Now, they provide support, yeah. but you don't need to bring in your own professionals right. to make sure that you're not signing your life away, yeah. right? Yeah. So if hire a franchise attorney, to me, that is like no better investment. Okay. Mm. Right, because you know I can help you with all sorts of things, but I'm not an attorney. Yeah. But a franchise attorney who focuses on franchising day in and day out, they can look at the FDD of a brand and tell you probably in 20 minutes whether or not it's worth investing in. Okay. So that's what they get paid to do, yeah. and they do a very good job of it. And I know uh, you know I have a, a bunch of uh, friends in the industry, you know, that yeah. are franchise attorneys, yeah. and uh, and they um, you know you pay them whatever you pay them. It's probably not enough. But they get, it's, worth, it's, worth it's so it worth yeah. it because yeah. they're going to save you. I don't know if it's $1,000, $1,500, whatever it is. They're going to save you $250,000 yeah, of development yeah, costs, yeah, yeah. Right? Right, right? Into right. a brand they that. Pro, they you, protect you from the mistakes. They protect they're, they're you from the mistakes. That you don't see. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And so That's a great point. Uh, they get paid the big bucks, but uh, so worth it. Yeah. So I know you mentioned when you were talking about with, with franchising, there's a lot of systems that are behind you and you're not really on your own. But let's say someone wanted to be on their own. So, like, what would you say is really the big difference of someone going the the franchise route versus starting a startup? So, I think um, there's a, there's a lot to be said for both, right? Okay. There's pros and cons for both. So, on the pros of an independent business, um, you're you call the shots, right? Yeah. If you win, you get to take credit. If you yeah. fail, you got to take responsibility, right? Yeah. <laughs> it all falls on yeah. you. Yeah. And so you get you get to celebrate, right? right. Because you you've accomplished something and you have your name on it and it's shiny and your mm -hmm. family's legacy and all those things. But you can have that same thing yeah. with a franchise. Right. And the difference is you hit the ground running with a franchise. Mm -hmm. With an independent concept, you're wearing every single hat, right. right? So you are you're in charge of real estate, construction, uh, marketing, market planning, like everything. You're also having to be the salesperson. You're also working the counter. You're doing all the things, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you get burnt out very quickly. So with a franchise system, you have um, you, you have just the support of your operations team. Mm -hmm. There's a construction manager, typically if there's brick and mortar involved, yeah, right. um, and then uh, real estate, then training, right? Okay. So you get trained to, to operate the way that the system operates to be successful. So you think about it. If you go to a McDonald's in Miami, and you go to McDonald's in Seattle, it's gonna be different. tastes exactly the same, yeah. right? Because there are processes in, in place. Mm. This is how you make the burger, yeah. right? right? And so there are all these manuals that okay. teach you everything, yeah. right? The precision. pickle, it's precision, precision yeah. right? Yeah. The yeah. pickle goes first. I don't all know, right. I've never worked at a McDonald's, but you know, there's a system for everything, okay. even putting together a cheeseburger, okay. right. right? And so when you go to Miami, you go to Seattle, it should, it will, it will taste exactly the same. Mm. Now it might, you know, might not be, yeah. you know, right. it's going to vary because yeah. when you bring in franchisees, there's, there's, there's room for error. Right. right. Um, but, but that's just with any system and even yeah. with corporately owned stores, yeah. there's still, you know, operator errors that right. happen, errors that happen all the time. Right. Um, but I just think, you know, again, this is a way for us to get into a system, learn how a franchise system works. And, and, and now you know, you have this working capital and you can use some of these, this profit to start the, the concept that you wanted to start, yeah. right? Yep. You, now you understand what the systems look like, what, it, what you're going to need to support anyone that might want to buy into or invest in your business, right? So you can take that information. Yeah. And so I wouldn't say you have to throw away that dream, but maybe it's a, a dream deferred, right? Just for a little while mm -hmm. until you get into something. I always recommend getting into something smaller, right? So if you're new to franchising, new to business ownership, start small, right? Go with something that doesn't require a lot of you. Okay. So maybe it's... Um, a pet services company, right? Um, or maybe it's an ice cream shop or um, a cookie shop, something small, like not a huge menu that's really complex. And you get into it and you learn it and you learn it. And then you bring your family in and they yeah. learn it, right? So then as you're continuing to grow, they can grow with you yeah. and now you can scale. Generational wealth at its finest. So, Ms. Carter, I know we talked about really getting into franchising. So let's say someone listening. They're very intrigued about starting a franchise. What does that process look like of acquiring, a, let's say a restaurant, for example, mm -hmm. 
and then going about that process of attorney operation management things of that nature so how does really the process of getting a franchise really begin um it starts way before you reach out to a brand mm -hmm. right so that's where we come in um we want to make sure that we're helping to set you up for success so you need to understand where you are and be have have real come to jesus meetings with yourself right mm -hmm. How much money do I really have to invest? Mm -hmm. What is my credit score? Do I need to clean up my, mm. my credit history, right? Yeah. What is my net worth? A lot of people don't know what their net worth is. Basically, the simple way to figure it out is what you own minus what you owe. That's that gonna give you your net worth, right? Yeah. So you need to know what those numbers are and you need to understand like, what is it that you really wanna do, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about it in your office. You said, you, you talked about passion and just mm -hmm. you know all the things, right? So. What is it that you're really passionate yeah. about, right? Yeah. Because I believe in working from um, from a positive, That's right? right? That's right. So Absolutely. I, I'm not going to try and be a doctor at this big age, right? I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to go with what works for me, what I'm passionate about, what I love, what I enjoy, so that I can enjoy owning my business, mm -hmm. right? And I don't dread waking up every day and going into whatever it is. So I would say just really having a good understanding of what you want to do because you can talk to someone like me as, as a as a we call me a broker but I, I do a lot more than what a broker does but really understanding what you want to get into like i've mm -hmm. talked to people all the time they're like oh i just don't know so we narrow it down what do you do what do your kids like to do mm -hmm. poll your friends see what they're into where, where are they spending their money yeah. right um you want to do something that you know is going to be beneficial and that where you're going to have a solid customer base right. so i think having those real conversations and then Figuring out what does that time frame look like? Are you going to stay at your job? Are you going to try and work part time? Um, I don't believe in absentee ownership. I don't. I don't believe in yeah. it. Right. I think if you want to be truly successful in anything, you go with Plan A. Right. There's no Plan B. There's yeah. no. I'm, I got a wife and a girlfriend. Like you got to yeah. pick one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to judge. Yeah. I'm not going to judge. Yeah. 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 This is not a relationship advice. Uh, it's not relationship advice. No, okay, no, I digress. Y'all no, no, cut that out. No, I'll cut but, that out. But if you do have to choose, that's on you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so you just have to you have to narrow it down. Like, what do you want, truly want to do, and then go with it, right? Yeah. So what I do is I, I talk with everyone, and we we narrow it down to ten, right? So we we look at ten different brands. Mm -hmm. We go through all of the data, right? How much does it cost? What are the average unit volumes, royalties, so on and so forth, development costs, all that stuff. Yeah. And then um, whether or not there, the territory is available, because that's a huge component yeah. that people don't really yeah. think about. And so then we narrow it down to three, and then we get to the, the one that they yeah, really want to go to, right? So there's a process. And then once we, we go through that, if, if someone chooses to work with me as a consultant, then by the time we reach the brand, you're ready. Right? right, you've already talked to the your lender. You already have some sort yeah. of a commitment in place. So once I then turn you over to whatever brand you're interested in, that then shortens the sales cycle for the salesperson mm. at that brand. Mm. So it's a win-win right. for everybody yeah. because now okay. we're not wasting time. Like because once you enter into the funnel of a of a brand, um, that salesperson has a short amount of time to really right. work with you. Mm. Right, they want you to get to a decision pretty quickly. Mm. Because they have goals to meet, yeah. right? They have families, they have right. responsibilities, Building right? Anything. You know, everybody yeah. works to get paid, right? Mm -hmm. And so this whole thing really, you know, it's it's about efficiency. So if you know I'm not ready to do anything for another year, there's no sense in calling right. a brand. And now the salesperson is chasing you for nine, ten months right. for you to eventually tell them no, right? So we just try to help on both sides of the equation. Yeah. So it really looks like before someone looks into getting into franchising, they need to have a very clear plan of, this is how much money I have, this is how far I'm looking out into the future. Like, you need to have a set amount of goals. This is not something you just get into just out of the blue, so. Yeah. yeah. But, I, but I also like the part that you said, and I'm a firm believer of this, and it's just how I've been trained. Mm -hmm. Even when I worked at Pepsi, and Quaker, and when I remember at Pepsi, in my first week, now here I'm going to finance making, you know, big money, I guess, back then. <laughs> <laughs> at least I thought it was, but anyway. You know, if they say, okay, hey, don't, don't even come to work, go straight to the bottler. You're gonna be, you're, you're gonna be slinging cases mm -hmm. for a week, for two weeks. That's like, what, what, that's the only way you know the business. Mm -hmm. You know, every every consumer product company, even the restaurants, I learned everything frying chicken. 
learn how to, to do Thank the roles, the Cinnabon, all that, because that's the only way I could come back and understand the numbers and what they really meant to me. Yeah. And a lot of times, um, and I remember when I was at AFC, they would bring people in and they would have that absentee kind of mentality. So I'm gonna have somebody else running. And I was like, okay, this is not gonna work long term, but you know, let's roll up our sleeves. I'll do what I can, but it's just, because yeah. you're not vested in it, yeah. I don't think. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, my heart kind of goes out to a lot of athletes who were allowed to, to purchase franchises, but weren't necessarily set up for success. So, you know, they had this big checkbook and you know, they were stroking a check and then the business just kind of fell through their hands yeah, right. because they just weren't prepared, right? They're still on the field, on the court playing and, and didn't really have, a lot of them didn't really have the infrastructure yeah. or the support to be as successful as right. they could be That's right. if they were, you know, if they had the right infrastructure. So, yeah. um, you know, it's just a matter of making sure that you are prepared yeah. because it's a business, right? And so there's a, there's a lot of, um, there are a lot of legal ramifications, right? Yeah. If you don't meet your requirements, if the brand doesn't meet their requirements, and if you don't know what that is, you like, you're just kind of, you're just aiming in the dark at yeah, that no. point, right? Yeah. So you really need to understand what you're getting yourself into. It is a life changing opportunity and it could be a great thing if you're prepared yeah but if you just walk in thinking everybody else is going to do the work and you're just going to clean the register gonna then you might as well just write yeah. a check out to target right. carter yeah right. i remember watching a um watching a, i guess it may have been a podcast or something they had junior bridgman on there oh yeah and everyone knows he had 150 wendy's, wendy's mm -hmm. and he talked about the first one he had and he actually went into the you know the restaurant and he Flip yep. the burgers and everything. So mm -hmm. I do. It just resonated with me. Here's someone that you know planned it out, knew exactly what he wanted to do, but also understood that he needs to, you know, he needs to understand the business. Sure. And from that standpoint, um, I'm always, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna buy anything, you need yeah. to understand it. Yeah. And, and there's a way to to kind of have your your feet in both worlds, right? Yeah. You can you can get someone to be your operating partner, right? but also attend training. And so that when you're ready to resign or retire, whatever the case is, you have something to walk into, yeah. right? right? And so you, the worst thing you wanna do is just retire and then not have a plan. Mm -hmm. So if you work the plan and then, you know, you get to the point where you're ready to make that decision, you then have something to, to actually right. work on and work towards as soon as you know, as soon as that, that chapter closes. Yeah. So Ms. Carter, I am aware that you have your own firm in which you really help people start that process with mm -hmm. franchising. Do you, can you elaborate more on that? I know it's called the franchise player. If you want to tell the people a little bit more about the <laughs> franchise player, really what you do every day. Yeah. So the franchise player, we, um, we talk to folks all day long about uh, their goals and aspirations to, to own a business. Sometimes it's just a business. Sometimes it's a franchise. So I focus on franchising because that's really the space that I, um, that I, I have the most knowledge in mm -hmm. when it comes to small business. Um, but you know, there's there are other small businesses that, that I can assist with as well. So I work with folks who wanna buy a franchise. Um, some just are looking for education at this point. So we have a, a six week program that's launching uh, in January. Good for you. Um, thank Perfect. you. Yeah. So that's gonna be great. Um, and then we also um, work with individuals who have franchise concepts that they wanna come, I'm sorry, they have business models that they want to convert to a franchise concept. Wow. So we help them with mm -hmm. that as well. Um, on my consultancy side of the business, uh, which is Guest First Services, that was my first consultancy. Yep. Um, we work with all brands, um, people from all different backgrounds, right, to fill in the gaps wherever they may need. So I may get a client who is um, a, a startup, right? They're, they're a newer brand and they need help with um, building their franchise sales and development team or their their process, right? Mm -hmm. They might need a CRM, or you know, a, a system, a database that yeah. they can put all their information yeah. to. Um, they may need me to follow up on leads that they've gotten. You know, whatever it is, we don't have a problem with filling yeah. in, um, but we want to just make sure that we're we the brands know that we are there to support them. Right. Um, so it's really you know a matter of the consultancy on the guest first services side is right. you know again for pretty much everyone and everything. Uh, the franchise player was created because there is a need, right? Yeah. The information just has not been reaching our community. Right. And so this is a way to really bridge the gap yeah. so that it's a win-win for everybody. So you like, um, you like a rich Paul, huh? 
Yeah. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. You just know everybody. Yeah. Well, no, not everybody. <laughs> no, I, I, I saw you come in there at Bentley, so I saw, I saw, I saw bags. Of, I saw bags of Rich Paul loaned that to me. <laughs> <laughs> shout, out, shout out Rich shout Paul. Shout out to Rich Paul. There you go. Absolutely. There we go. So I know, so you went to the consulting firm, the franchise player. Mm -hmm. If I'm starting out, do I go to the franchise player first to get the information and then maybe go over to the consulting firm to really start funneling into the franchise process? Would that how that works? No, so they're two separate companies right. all together. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with uh, the franchise player, we're really focused on taking the show on the road. So we started okay. with the franchise game last month, um, the, the first ever uh, African-American franchise symposium and trade show in the country. Wow. So we, we launched that in Dallas or Plano, Texas last month. Was it and, huge attendance? Oh my God. It was, it was, we wanted to keep it intimate yeah. purposely. Okay. Um, next year. Um, so we had it on Friday and we got the call on Monday, like, are you guys coming back next year? Uh -oh. So that, I mean, it was, it was so well attended. The people that were there were there for the right reasons. It yeah. wasn't just about having seat, you know, people in seats, yeah. right? Yeah. It was about having folks who are ready to get deals done. So next year is going to be big. Oh my gosh. Next year is going to be amazing. What's that big? What's the, the uh, Invest Fest? Invest Fest? No, there's another one that's in Austin the, for, mm -hmm. uh, for the tech startups. What do they call it? Afrotech? Oh, oh no. It's not Russell Brunson's thing, is it? No, I can't remember the name, but it's big. It's so like apparently huge. our memory's not working. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we didn't take care of the premises. So, but, yeah, so you're going to be, like, huge. I don't know. I don't want to be I'm huge. Put, I'm putting it out there. Why? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. No, I don't want to be huge. you want to invite us? I want to be impactful. Right. We're going to do it on the stage. Well, the you, are, you all are definitely invited. <laughs> on the stage. Please, on the bring stage. it to the stage. Y'all hear us. Listen, y'all hear y'all in Dallas, Texas. Got a commitment. There is a commitment. Got a commitment. Paperwork. There we go. We're going to see y'all in Dallas. But we don't want to be, you know, there are some conferences that are just huge and it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a different audience, not to say that they're not welcome, but we want to make sure that we're yeah. putting folks in the room that can connect with one another and get deals done in the next three to six months, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because it's an investment. When yeah, brands exactly. come and they, they exhibit, they're paying to be there, yeah. right? It's like a career fair. Well, there's a, there's a trade show, yeah. yeah. So the brands came, we had awesome. Smoothie King, and we had wow. um, Fuddruckers, Pet in Mind, IHG Hotels, hmm. American Franchise Academy, shout out to Aisha Pascaro. Um, shout out to Brian Woods at Neighborly. Hey, see, this um, is what we do. We promote. That's all we do. That's what we do. <laughs> but that means so they had their, you know, we had the vendor area where they had their booth set up. Um, and then, you know, and, and they paid to be there. They got wow. to meet folks who are ready to to, to make and deals happen. Deal. Dude, you came up with this. I came up with this. Look, look, idea. look at this yeah. part. <laughs> this is, isn't it amazing when yeah. you have a purpose? All these things just pop in your head yeah, that fine. you want to do. Yeah. Let me tell you. So no you're onto something. No limitation. There's no limit. No That's limits. That's why it's going to be big. So I've had this vision for over 10 years. Oh, wow. And every brand I've worked for, I'm kind of like, you know, we need to do this, we need to do that. And it just so wasn't a priority. Fight, so you used to fight that battle internally. Mm. <laughs> I saw the eyes go. Yeah. She saw the eyes go. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to, trying to keep it cute. Yeah. <laughs> trying yeah. to keep it cute. We're, we're going to be political here. We're not, we don't want to get shut down after no. two episodes. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So... I've had this vision for over 10 years and everywhere I've gone, you know, I've, I get those, these, these thoughts, these just ideas of what I want to do and who I want to be on the stage Absolutely. and all the things. Okay. So, uh, I have a client, uh, which is where the, the, the event was held and I don't know if I can use her name, so I'm just not going to say it, but, um, I have a client and, uh, and I was telling my, my contact there about this vision and she goes, well, why don't you have it here? Mm. Now, mind you, I just started this company right. in January. Yeah. We had this conversation in June. Wow. Right. Three months? Three months. In three months, we put that conference together. And that's what happens when opportunity meets preparation. That's right. Yeah, had I prepared. not been prepared, prepared, right? When she said, let's go, as soon as she said, let's go, and we you found the date. That's right. I put together my team. Were we were ready. Was was ready. Done. We were ready. And so I have two, a partner, two partners that are absolutely amazing. And we just, we flew to Dallas. Well, one of them lives in Dallas. Uh, we met with them and then um, we took a picture and just got it started, done. right? It was amazing. You had some, you had some amazing brands there. That yeah. is, I mean, they weren't yeah. like just. But let me tell you, it's from relationships. Mm -hmm. So IHG Hotels, um, a good friend of mine, uh, I met him when I moved to Atlanta 20 years ago. Wow. I was in the hotel industry. Wow. 
and he and I were really good friends. Like I remember he didn't have a car and I have to pick him up <laughs> to take him to work sometimes. <laughs> now he's like a VP at IHG, like doing amazing yeah. things. So when I when he learned what I was doing, it was a no brainer. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Smoothie King, another brand. Um, my old boss is the VP of franchise development there. He wow. he okay. know he he found out what I was doing. And he's like, how yeah. can I help? So it's a matter. And, and oh, back to the conference. Everybody that was on the stage, I had been collecting people over the past fifteen years. Mm -hmm. So when I reached out to them, they're like, well, what do you need me to do? Look at that right there. They were there. That's a blessing. With no question. And my keynote. Um, got sick the day before. Oh no! And so uh -oh. Damon Dunn, who I mentioned earlier, was supposed to moderate the next panel after the keynote. Oh. And um, I told him, I said, "Listen, the keynote got sick." He said, "Well, what do you need me to do?" He just slid in. Huh? I said, "I need you to do what you do because he's just That's he's awesome. just very well spoken. Yeah. He's yeah. he's run for office before. Like he's like he's that guy." Okay. So he walks in that morning. And he says, okay, he, he, he says, here's, here's what we're gonna do. We already had the game plan. He said, um, read my bio, pay this, play this video, and then hand me the mic. Mm -mm. That it was down. it. Shut it down. That was it. And he Shut blew everybody away. It was it was amazing. Shout, so out, Mr. Damon Damon Dunn. Dunn. Shout out to Damon Shout Dunn. Shout out to Mr. Damon Dunn. Dunn. The big heart. Shout out but to you know, Dunn. my key takeaway from this is, and I feel your energy. Mm. And you know, this, uh, what I call, I'm big on EQ, emotional intelligence. I, I feel all of that from you. Yeah. So, okay. But the big, the, the big thing, the big thing I do here, and I tell, and I, I tell my students this all the time: social capital is important. Absolutely. That word. Absolutely. You know, it's very, it's, it's important. And if you, if, and if you don't maintain it correctly. It can literally destroy you too at the same time. Oh yeah. So when you tell people you're gonna be somewhere, be there. Be there. If you tell someone you're gonna call, call. If you step, whatever you do, your work. And I always tell my students, give more than you take, because mm -hmm. when you need that trump card, no, nah. <laughs> my bad. My bad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please don't kill me. <laughs> but when you need that, when you need that faith, that that's faith. better. There we yeah. go. You can get. It. Yeah. And Absolutely. then people say, hey, yeah. and you're a good person too, yeah. and they know that. That all comes together. Yeah. yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Thank you. That's I appreciate a beautiful that. thing. Because yeah, it's, it's all about this is all about relationships. Of I talked about the people piece earlier, yeah. right? Damon didn't have the people piece in his business plan, and okay, that was important to get that deal done. But just in life, right? Mm -hmm. You have to you have to treat people with kindness. Yeah. Yep. You don't have to be nice all the time, but, but be yeah. kind, right? Be kind. It doesn't hurt to be kind. Yeah. And so if you're kind to people, people remember how you treated them and how you made right. them that's feel. They, I think that's the only thing, you know, that's they remember. It. Yeah. Right, you could have bought them a Christmas card. Or like they don't, Yeah. people buy gifts all the time, right. right? But how you make somebody feel, Heartfelt. that really goes a long it way. Resonates. And so to your point, yeah, that's a, thank you for, for picking up on that. Like it's just, to me, I just, um, I want to make sure that, um, People see the God in me, because mm. what I do, I know this is this is not something I would have chosen for myself. Yeah. I know, like I mentioned at the top of the the podcast, I know that this was God given yeah. and purpose driven. Like this is absolutely what I was meant to do. You want to know my dream? In 1988, when I when I left the chapel, I said I I wanted to make a lot of money, get a BMW, <laughs> <laughs> go back to Chicago, blah blah blah. And uh -huh. if someone had told me I was going to be teaching here mm -hmm. in the year 2023, right. I'd have told them, I don't know what you want, but <laughs> I ain't doing that. That's that ain't me. happening. Right. So you Fine. never know. You never know your calling, what you're being drawn to. Yeah. Huh. And, and, and the thing I'm the thing I'm receiving today is that it, for you, it just seems natural. Yeah. Like you own it. Like you know your stuff. Yeah. Uh, which you. which I know you're going to show my students today. So I'm glad I reached out because I said I was following you for a while. I said, "Who's this woman?" <laughs> said, you know how people on LinkedIn and they start yeah. looking for your background. They yeah. said, "Why are you looking at my back?" And I was like, yeah. "Wow, she's really doing some powerful things." Thank you. And I know franchising has always been like that. It's almost like a gatekeeper. Like, mm -hmm. how do I get in? How do I get up to the ninth floor? Well, and best kept secrets. I want, you know, I want to, you know, I want to fry some chicken. How do I do that? And I said, like, "You know, I hooked you up with somebody." And I do remember this uh, shared a story. I got interested in business because of my dad indirectly and 
I always tell them the story. And listen, I'm like, well, I didn't realize I was doing this. I, you remember um, when Jesse Jackson in Chicago had Operation Breadbasket? Oh, okay. And he, that's before it became Operation Push. Okay. And he always talked about economic survival and empowerment in the black community, the franchise to do those things. And I said, what, is, what, do you, what, is, what does he mean by franchise? Oh, I mean, on the McDonald's. I said, well, what does that mean? Father drew, uh, drove me to a McDonald's and said, this is on the south side of Chicago, more than likely a black person owns it. Mm -hmm. look, look at the employees in there. Yeah. I was like eight or nine at that time. So he, my dad planted that seed, that exposure, that exposure early yeah. on. So I always knew, say, okay, it might not be a franchise, but it, it'll be business. And, see, and, and when I was going to coming through college, the only thing I had in terms of a playbook was Black Enterprise. Mm -hmm. I waited for Black, you know what I'm talking about. I waited Shout for Black, Black Enterprise. <laughs> Shout out to Black Enterprise. Shout out to Black Enterprise. I waited for Black Enterprise. I waited for Black Enterprise every month. And then they come out with the top 500, top 1,000. A lot of those guys would own franchises. Yeah. Mm. Well, where I grew up, I would go to McDonald's all the time with my dad. And my dad was smart. He didn't know about franchising because he, I know he would have shared that information with me. And uh, I never knew that, you know, I grew up in the, in the inner city of Boston. It was Dorchester, Roxbury, Mattapan. That's where we grew up. And, and, you know, hopefully you can climb your way out and, and create some success for yourself and a lot of people. New yeah, addition. new addition. Shout out we to just give it, you. You know where New Edition is from? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. We just, we just give it mad shout out. Listen. <laughs> shout out New Edition. <laughs> my favorite group ever. But my dad, you know, he was a smart guy. Never mentioned franchising to me. And, I mean, for me to not know about it, and my family did not know about it. And when I got into this space, I said, there has to be a way to get this information out there. Because yeah. when you look at every level within the franchising space, every level, there's a lack of diversity. That's right. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Unless, unless you're in accounting, <laughs> unless yes. you're working at the store level, mm -hmm. right? Or you're the customer. There's, there's really no other place where you see a lot of us, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I, I just said, you know what, I'm I'm tired of spending my energy trying to explain why, what what the business benefit is of diversity, right? I'm tired of that. I'm not going to spend my energy doing that anymore. I'm going to take my energy and I'm going to use it in a positive way yeah. and give it to those yeah. who, who want will greatly receive it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. selfishly, I didn't want to use my customer service voice anymore mm. and I didn't want to wake up to an alarm clock. Mm. And I've been able there to achieve go. both of those mm. things. So. That's awesome. Here we are. That's awesome. So, not to get too in the future, but what are some of your future visions look like? Really relating to the thing in Dallas, the symposium, mm -hmm. maybe future things. I know you said you have a course coming out for the franchise player. What does we the future do. look like for we you? Do so lots to come. Okay. Um, so from the franchise game, we now have uh, two other platforms. Um, the smaller version of the franchise game, which is tailored to specific brands and corporations that want to. Um, have uh, education brought to their establishments or their associations. Um, that's called our, our scrimmage. Yeah. And then we have the huddle, which is where I personally come out and talk to um, basically HBCUs, yeah. black churches, um, Divine Nine, you name mm -hmm. it. You know, wherever our people live, work, play, and worship is where I want to be. Great strategy. Um, yeah. To great just strategy. really share this information. So we have that. And then the franchise game 2024 will be in Plano, Texas again next year okay. um awesome. we are going to exhibit at super bowl um in <laughs> shout out the nfl roger goodell out. here we go I don't so know about shout out. i'm thinking about some tickets <laughs> <laughs> so we are in the process of I'm finalizing not, I, i'm not laughing <laughs> Preston, yeah, I want, some tickets. I want well, tickets. <laughs> well, I don't know if I have tickets to the game, but we're gonna have access yeah, to the players. Game. So the player oh. network association. I know what that's that's okay. that's all we need. That's yes. all we need. Yes. So, Jalen you know, Hurts, we will see you. <laughs> yeah, Jalen Hurts and everyone else. So, um, so really exciting stuff. That's awesome. Since the since the franchise game, there's been a lot of opportunity for us yeah. to get into spaces where. Um, you know, it's just, it, it makes sense for us to be. And yeah. so we're bringing brands with us. So I do have a brand partner that will probably be exhibiting with me um, as, a, as a sponsor for oh, me being there, okay. which is great. And a um, lot, of, lot of great things come oh, out of awesome. this. So I, I, that's awesome. I, I, I have great, I, I feel real good about you. Thank you. Because I think you're hitting on, I always, when I, when I, when I was on the other side, and I always said, God, it, there needs to be somebody representing athletes making sure they're you know they're getting treated properly um, they're getting the right information yeah. right training 
and you know the the, the agent plays their role. They get the contract done, but. You know, do it, I think there's an opportunity for you to partner with these agents and say, hey, you know, I can help, you know, your athletes really uh, prepare for when that day comes where they're not able to play anymore. I can help show them opportunities. Yeah. And I think, you know. And, and that's a process of doing that. And absolutely. To close that gap. Absolutely. And I, I feel bad for the, you know, for the, for the the, the, the athletes, they get a bad rap because, again, they weren't set up for success. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, a lot of brands don't really want to get into business with them because they don't think they're going to take it seriously. Yeah. And so, not to say that I'm like the Olivia Pope of franchising, which, I don't know, I'm not. Rich but, Paul. Rich, Paul. <laughs> Rich, Paul, I'm a Rich Paul of franchising. Shout out, Rich. Shout out to Rich. But um, I just think they... If they had the right information yep. and some some support around what they were trying to do, yeah. that things could have <laughs> panned yeah. out differently, yeah. right? So, um, so my goal is to you know if I can just touch and help you one know person. one person at yeah. a time, one athlete at a time, whatever we can do to help, um, that's that's really what, what our goal is. That's um, great stuff. That's awesome. So, Miss Carter, as we begin to wrap out, um, if if there was one thing that you could leave the audience with about really the power and the importance of Franchising, mm -hmm. what, what would what would you say it would be? Um, I just believe that franchising is the greatest, well, not the greatest. Let me take that back. I think it's probably the most efficient way to start to create generational wealth. Mm, okay. Right. Yeah. Get into a system where you can hit the ground running. You can bring your family into the fold. Mm -hmm. You can grow from there. Bring your friends in. Right. Yeah. I've worked with. With, um, with groups from all different backgrounds. And what I've noticed is that they pool their resources, right? They might buy one at first and they work it, everybody works, it gets to understand what it is, and then they branch off, right? They might branch off and buy individual uh, cons units or they might branch off and, and form different partnerships, but there's a collection mm -hmm. of folks yeah. pooling their resources, their information, their background um, to make those investments. Mm -hmm. And we just have to learn to start trusting one of them. And, and some people will say, well, you know, I don't want to get in a partnership. I don't want to be in business with anyone else. Can't really trust people. Yeah. Well, you have to be trustworthy first, right? right? Um, so own. make sure you're you make sure you're trustworthy and make sure you're partnering people that you trust, right? Yeah. So you can't get into business with everybody. Right. Um, but I'm sure we all know at least one or two people, whether it's a sibling, a parent, a grandparent, that might be interested and might be in a position to lend their resources yeah. to help get approved right. for a concept, right? Yep. Start right. small, start simple, and I think um, again, hit the ground running with something that you can um, you can rest assured that you're going to have support yeah. uh, behind you so that you are set up for success and not That's failure. Good. So, for all the people who are looking to get into contact you with uh -huh. you, where can they find you on all social media platforms? Oh my gosh! So, um, on LinkedIn, uh, the franchise player on. Instagram, I am the franchise player, and on the website, uh, thefranchiseplayer.com. We will, I'll, I'll put all that in the description. But Miss Carter, we are so thankful for your time and your knowledge. Professor Young, as always, thank you guys, and we will see you on the next one. Peace. Thank you. Thank you.